again, everyone. I'm here what I think is the last of my artist rolls that I have not shown you yet. This is by the same maker as the prior one that I showed you. This is by the company Boku. And uh, it's a little bit smaller than the other one. Here, I'll pull that one out. So this is the other one that I showed you the other day. And this is quite a bit taller, but it's about the same. Maybe, maybe this one's a little deeper this way, a little wider and but a little shorter. But they're both from the same company. I'm gonna put this one out of the way. I'll put a link to the video where I go through this one so you can see what's in there if you haven't seen it already. Uh, but they're both from the same company and uh, like I was saying before, this is hand printed heavy linen and then there's waxed canvas and this is all handmade. So this is the artist roll that I am using the majority of the time lately. It has all of my current watercolor sketching materials that I'm using pretty regularly. I am currently enrolled in a, um, a class with Jane Blundell online and everything in here are the things that I'm using for that class. So let's go ahead and open it up. So it has this little elastic band that goes around that loop there and then a little zippered pocket here. I'm going to go through the zippered pocket first. So I have this little natural sponge which you can use for trees or you know anything really and then I have my Expeditionary Arts palette that has the Jane Blundell collection of watercolors in it. This is called the Ultimate Mixing Palette the Ultimate Mixing Palette Edition, and then this shows the colors that are in there. Okay. Keep all that there so you can see it. And then I have a spray bottle where I can spray uh, water onto the paints before I start painting to moisten them up a little bit. And then I have an eraser. And then I have this little guy full of 4-H leads. I have been using these harder leads for drawing under watercolor because they don't leave a lot of graphite behind and um, it's, a, it's a little bit more muted of a mark. It's not going to be uh, crazy noticeable with a finished product. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in here. And this holds so much more than you would think it would hold. It, it's, it's really quite amazing how much you can fit in this little roll here. Okay, and I'm gonna zip that back up. And then I'm gonna flip it around and show you what's in this portion here. So back here, <laughs> I have uh, another watercolor palette. This is what I've been calling my main travel watercolor palette. The other uh, Jane Br Blundell set is specifically for that course but also you know has a very specific purpose and has specific mixes that I am learning how to use and all of that but this is what I bring around to um, travel with if I'm only gonna bring one palette this is what I'll bring and I made a few changes since I think the last time I showed this palette I used to have a couple of reds in um, in Windsor Newton brand, and then I swapped those out for a couple of Daniel Smith reds instead. Uh, the reason why I did that is because the majority of my palette is Daniel Smith, and the Daniel Smith colors were not playing well with the Windsor Newton colors. And apparently this is a known thing. I, I did was not aware of it until I took this class recently that Windsor Newton colors don't always work with uh, Daniel Smith for some reason who knows if it's an additive or, or what it is that that fights each other I also had before I had two different ultramarine blues I had what I still have this uh, Daniel Smith French ultramarine but I also had a Schmincke ultramarine finest which I swapped out for lunar black and that's really just so that I can play with lunar black but I've I found that it was really unnecessary to have two ultramarines on my palette. 
I, I thought that they would be different enough that I would use them for different purposes, but that turned out not to be true. So I, uh, I just took out that Schmincke Ultramarine Finest. And then I also swapped out, I had a, um, another Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna here. And the, the Burnt Sienna was mixing okay. It just was really, really hard to rewet. And it just wasn't giving me, I didn't like the color of it because different burnt siennas look differently. Um, so I, instead I swapped it out for, the, for a whole bean or whole mine burnt sienna, which I like much better. It is granulating, which I, the, the Windsor Newton burnt sienna was not granulating. And I thought that that would be a nice contrast with the Daniel Smith Lunar Earth, which is also very similar to a burnt sienna. But I like granulation so much that it doesn't bother me that I have two granulating similar earth colors on my palette. So those are the changes since the last time I've showed that to you. And I might do another uh, video just on the palette and the changes so that you can see swatches and mixes, but we'll, we'll see if I get around to that. But anyway, that, <laughs> that was a longer version of what's in my palette right now. I also topped off all my colors in here. I was uh, running out of a few of them and some of them I had not put a lot of color in there, so they were kind of sitting low in the pan. So I went ahead and filled up I, I topped off my colors recently as well. Okay. Oh, and just one thing, one color that I'm considering swapping out is I'm considering swapping out my Schmincke Thalo Green for a Viridian. Um, so Viridian is granulating, whereas Thalo Green is not. I'm not sure if I would switch it out for a Schmincke Viridian. Uh, part of the reason why I'm thinking about that is because I've been really loving the Viridian in um, the Roman Schmall set, but I, I probably wouldn't put that in there because I wouldn't want a, whole, a full pan of Viridian, but it just made me think, you know, maybe I'll swap that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back here. Okay, and then here I just have a few tools that I do use for sketching and watercoloring. So this is a Sharpie pen. This is kind of my staple that uh, my staple non fountain pen sketch pen. Uh, and I'll just go this, I'll just go from right to left. And then this is a Rosemary and Company's R8 Kalinsky Sable brush. This is a pretty thick brush but it is fantastic. I really love this brush. It can come to a really sharp point. You can do um, washes really easily, but it is kind of big. And sometimes I find it a little too big for what I'm working on. So I might swap this one out. Oh, let me wet my fingers and get those hairs back into the center a little bit. Put that back in there. Oh, it's doing it again. I really try to make sure that I'm not bending back any of the brush fibers when I put it in there because I don't want it to ruin the brush. And I'm really having a hard time with these right here. Let's see. And I think that this particular, this particular brush, I, I think I wish that the container that it came in was a little bigger because I definitely, notice that it's kind of hard to put away. And then I have this little dropper tube. Um, I mostly put this in here to wet my watercolor pans, but I also have the sprayer in here. So um, I'm not really sure why I have this in here anymore, but I don't know, maybe if I, if I want to use a little drop of color specifically that's like a, a, a wash that I've watered down, I might use it for that. And then back here, I'm gonna have to push that out a little bit. I have another watercolor brush. This is the 1 4th inch dagger brush from Rosemary and Company. It's not labeled because I've always kind of had it in here. And, and this is my primary brush. I use this for most of my sketching when I am outdoors. And this one too, you have to kind of watch that these little end hairs don't get caught up is just a little bit fiddly, but it's worth it to make sure they don't splay. And then here I have um, a masking fluid marker. So those of you that don't know what masking fluid is, it is a, it, it's, it normally comes in a little jar and you would put it on with either a brush or a little tool 
that would allow you to put it over areas on your watercolor paper that you want to remain white. And then you would let the masking fluid dry on the paper and then you can paint over it with whatever you want and it's not gonna get into that area that you've put masking fluid over. And then once your watercolor is completely dry, you go back in with an eraser or, or a uh, what they call a rubber pickup and get the masking fluid off. It's, it's kind of like, um, it, it's a little bit like rubber cement. That's kind of the texture of it when it's dried and, and sometimes you can just peel it off. But this is that masking fluid in the form of a little marker. And this one I've, I've really, really liked. It is blue in color, which I kind of like because you can then see where you put it down. You're obviously not gonna be able to mark big areas off with this because the, the nib is fairly small. But it is great for making little details, like if you wanted to have uh, little bits of a wave marked off so that they would stay white or if you wanted little feathers in a bird to stay white you could you could easily draw those in with this paint paint over it and then once you're done um, pick that up so it's really really handy I, and some people have had kind of mixed results with their masking fluid markers but this one has worked really great for me so I, I have not had any issues it's the Molotow graphics art masking liquid okay and then I do have a water brush I don't use this very often although this is fairly old and has been used quite a bit in the past but um, this is just sort of case of emergencies in case I don't have water available and then this is the pencil I'm using and this is a Pentel uh, does it say what the what the model is mm, I forget I forget what it's called. oh there it is it's the carry pencil and this is what I have my 4H leads in and I really like this pencil because it's it feels really nice in the hand it is at what a 0.5 I think yeah 0.5 which is fairly standard for a mechanical pencil but um, it just it draws really well feels really nice it's a good solid pencil and then here is my fountain pen that I use for my fountain pen sketching which has uh, platinum carbon black in it and this is a platinum uh, fountain pen and again I, I never remember the name of it because it has a number for a name so I will just put the link down below and and I just ask you to reference that it is no longer being produced um, and I've said this before so if you can find it for around $50 which was the original retail price uh, it's a great value. It's a gold nib and I use it for sketching because I like the flexibility of the gold nib. I think this is a fine. I think all of the ones that I have are a fine. Yeah, all of the ones. The two that I have are fine point, fine nibs. So um, I really, really love it and I'm really, really sad that they are not making them anymore. And I just noticed that I have some little scratches down here and that's just because I'm using it so much and it's, I use it to, because um, I've been making a lot of swatches and things for this Jane Blundell watercolor class. We've been playing with a lot of different mixes and I will label everything with this so that, you know, it's it's in permanent pen. And anyway, it's, it's my go-to fountain pen for everything, sketching wise. And then this is a Uniball Signo white pen. You may notice some duplication from what's in here and what was in my prior artist rolls. It's because I like the same tools and I like to have the same tools available. Um, I kind of know what I like at this point. There, there's still some playing with new tools that I do, but I'm starting to winnow it down to the things that I really like. And this one is kind of an extra. It's a 0.5 Winsor Newton uh, fine liner. So it's, it's really not much different than the um, Sharpie felt tip, but I, I kind of like this one in that um, the end of this is a little bit longer you maybe just a fraction because when you open it up it's a little bit longer as a pen so I feel like sometimes you can get some like sketchier marks with this one just because of the shape of it but that that could all just be in my head as well <laughs> but but anyway it's an extra essentially all right so I think that's it there's another compartment back here that I don't have anything in so I, I haven't even 
uh, completely loaded this thing up. I probably wouldn't be able to put much more in the pocket over here, but I could probably put a couple of extra brushes or something in here, um, something back here. There's probably a little bit more space here to put something. There, there's just so much room in this little uh, package. Because this is shorter than the prior artist roll, you, I can't put anything like a uh, Palomino Blackwing pencil in here, for example, because that's just too tall. So, and that's part of the reason why I have the mechanical pencil because most of the pencils that I have are a little too tall for this one. I would say anything taller than this Winsor Newton fine liner would be a little bit difficult to put in here because that's, you know, maybe you could go a tiny bit taller, but that's pretty much the extent of the, the height of this. But that's it. Uh, again, I wanna say that these are not available all the time. I would say if you're interested in something like that, this definitely follow the shop owner's Instagram. She will put a notice when um, shop updates are going on. And um, I don't think she's doing any touring right now because of everything going on in the world. But she does occasionally tour around and, and give courses. I actually met her in, um, in uh in denver when she was at a local craft store which was really nice to meet her i i couldn't sign up for her class because it filled up so fast <laughs> and i i was at work while the course went up and then i missed out on getting into the class but anyway she does a lot of punch needle work which is kind of what she's most popular for or most known for and uh that's really beautiful too but you can see that on her website which i will uh link down below and other than that, I think we're done with that today. So thanks for watching. Feel free to like and or subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.